Thank you and good afternoon. It's my great pleasure to serve as the superintendent of Charter Oak and to be here with you this afternoon. I'm going to uh, divide my 10 minutes or so into uh, three different topics and uh, using common core math, I'd like to do three minutes or so of highlights of our district, three of some of the major reforms that uh, we're encountering this year and then three minutes of uh, demonstrating a little example of how our students are using technology with the new Common Core State Standards. Um, just a few of our highlights and about our school district. Uh, if you recall, in the last couple of three years, I spoke of our highlights using the state uh, test that we take each year and all the great things that our students were accomplishing. I'm not going to do that this year. Uh, we're in kind of a transition with state testing. And um, although our students did uh, very well in many different areas last year, our big focus last year was the beginning of the transition of Common Core State Standards and the STAR test that passed was based on the California standards. Uh, so um, but, uh, we have a lot of different ways of measuring um, all the good things that we do in Charter Oak, so I just want to mention a few before I move to the next category. One, we continue to do great things with our students with the high school. Um, as shown in the high school exit exam. Over the past several years, our passing rate for first time takers, 10th graders, is uh, 88%, and that's pretty strong. Our high school, uh, this past year, once named on the News Week's top 1,500 high schools in, in the country. We're proud of that. As you know, we have uh, inner, inner, um, an IV um, a program at our high school, and this year we've had um, more participants, more test takers. Uh, then years past, uh, most since 2009, and that program continues to grow and do extremely well. Some other measures that we use are advanced placement tests and our SAT, plastic aptitude tests. Our test taking rate has gone up again this year, uh, with higher passing rates and higher scores. Our UC eligible graduates increased last year by 2%. And our graduation rate last year, I reported, a year ago I reported it was 99%, last year it was 100%. So we even improved on that. Um, of our graduating class last year and their intentions for the future, 87% of our graduating class stated their intention to go to college. 4% of our graduates stated intentions to go to technical training, 4% to the military, and 5% right into the workforce. Speaking of workforce, our school district, like many, offer a great number of opportunities for ROP and uh, business academy courses. We have this year over a thousand, it's a thousand fifty-five students enrolled in different types of career tech ed programs, and we are currently working with Citrus College, Mount Sac, Rio Hondo College, on a new careers pathway trust that um, money became available this year for fifty, we're applying for a fifty million dollar grant to expand our career pathways uh, utilizing help from those institutions. Our business academy at our uh, high school won the UCLA business plan marketing competition for the fifth year in a row. We're very proud of that. And we continue to have articulated programs uh, with uh, Mount SAC uh, in the business and technology strands. This past year we opened up a year 13 program at one of our schools in conjunction with our ROP program and I think I saw Laura Adler here someplace and so thanks to her and that program we also find an offering one in EMT shortly. Uh, in other areas our high school uh, dramatic arts department this past year um, the fall play was um, uh, ranked as the top high school play in Los Angeles County and last month they performed against the top high school play in five other counties in the area for statewide awards. And so we were very proud of our high school for that and one of our leads for the play was who was voted the, the uh, top actress in, in all of those plays in the whole area. Our high school uh, uh, choir was invited to sing again at Disney uh, Concert Hall and now they've been invited to sing at Carnegie Hall in New York City for next year. So they're doing very well as well. In our sports programs, our wrestling team just won the league for the second year in a row. And our high, high school uh, team won for the third year in a row. And um, in fact, our high school coaches were named to be the coaches for the All-Star Game between California and Arizona uh, just a couple of weeks back. And so we're uh, proud they could represent us in that area. We uh, continue with our character education program, Character Counts. 
and victory with honor. And I say that because one of our high school seniors, Corey Brown, who is the quarterback on the team, uh, received the prestigious Champion of Characters Award for CIF, and that's only the second time that's been done for us. Our Oakville Virtual Academy is in its fourth year. You've heard me describe that program before. It's an online um, school for kindergarten through 12th grade, serving students in five area counties. We also have students that have won awards and sold artwork at the Fairflex um, Art Festival this past year. Moving down, just a couple facts about our middle school. Um, our middle school competes in the um, science and history, social science competitions for the county, and we're one of the middle schools that do that, and last year we had eight of our middle school students so make it to the state level in that competition, and we're working on that right now again for this year. Uh, we have an AVID program in our school district for middle school and high school, and it's to keep students uh, on track for college, and for next year we're expanding that program down into one of our elementary schools, so we'll have a K-12 AVID program. We also have uh, a strong connection with Laverne, University of Laverne, where their students um, provide, and about 40 of their students provide a college connections program with our elementary students on Saturdays and on some Sundays, and that's been very popular as well. We had two second graders just moving down to the elementary level that were selected out of seven students in the whole state of California in a digital photography competition this past year. We're very proud of those two second graders. And we have a third grade class that's actually presenting at the Q Conference in Palm Springs uh, this next month on um, some digital work applications using iPads. And so that we're very, very happy about that. One of our elementary schools was just named a distinguished school are eligible for a distinguished school for a second time, and we'll know more information about that shortly. Moving down into another area that we're very proud of is our Measure CO bond campaign that uh, was passed a little over a year ago. And we're very happy and proud to say that we have many projects that either have been completed or well underway. Our, our, our premier project is our new aquatic center. And right now, that's in. Uh, we had groundbreaking last month, and that's uh, well underway uh, at Charter Oak High School. We've also have uh, added a lot of new technology in our classrooms. We call it a smart classrooms project, where we put new smart boards, projectors, and um, audio systems for for students and for teachers. We have new laptops, uh, wireless technology, new phone system. We've also been adding new air conditioning and heating units for our schools and ADA compliant issues, and we spent a, a lot of the resources so far on um, uh, improving the outdoor look of our campus with new irrigation systems and landscaping and playground equipment and fall zones and so forth. And now we're moving into the area of electronic marquees. Just moving uh, a little bit into the uh, future projects, and I know Rob will probably talk a little bit about this as well, so I'll be a little shorter on this one since I think I exceeded my three minutes on highlights. <laughs> as you've probably read in many areas uh, about the new funding formula for California schools, the LCFF, and so we are now into that model, so we will be funded a little differently, and thanks for the help of Proposition uh, 30, I think we've turned the corner on funding, and the goal by the state is to get us back to the funding level of 2007, 2008, over an eight year period of time. And um, it, the funding is based on a per pupil allocation based on grade spans with a little bit of extra money to help serve students that are English language learners and uh, students that are uh, Title I or, or low income uh, children. And so we're right in the middle of that right now. And with that is a new requirement to construct a district-wide plan and how we're going to serve our students is called an LCAP and all districts are just now starting to grapple with that a little bit and that requires um, a plan to address three statewide uh, priorities and those are priorities are learning um, uh, conditions of learning, pupil outcomes and student and parent engagement and underneath those there's, there's eight separate goals that we'll be writing to and it requires a lot of input, uh, which is good, from community and staff and our bargaining units. And we're right in the, in the middle of that uh, input gathering. In fact, tomorrow night we have a town hall meeting in our school district to engage the community in conversations around needs for our district to match that with our, our revenue. Uh, the other new area that we have, of course, I mentioned a couple of times, is common core state standards. And that is the new standards that 45 states in the country have adopted for English language, arts, and mathematics. 
uh, with uh, literacy and fusion in, in the EL in the English or the other subject areas. And it's, uh, we've been uh, well underway, as I mentioned earlier, on that. And uh, uh, in the math area, it involves a little bit of new uh, type of math courses, which we've already adopted, and that's uh, integrated math. So there's the traditional math that we're all used to, and now an integrated math one, two, and three. And uh, we are phasing that in, and we've just started with integrated math one. Um, and to top it off, if that uh, wasn't enough, uh, we are also in a new, whole new testing type of a program um, called the SBAC. And uh, this new testing program, uh, it was being piloted this year and we're going to full implementation next year. And the students will actually take the tests on computers. They actually require headphones uh, because, uh, because the test is very much different. It's not just a multiple choice test any longer. There's a, a lot of different ways to answer questions and do performance tasks. And we'll be piloting, piloting that program for their students in grades three through eight this year uh, and, and in the month of April. So we're looking forward to that. We're doing a lot of uh, kind of testing that out right now and making sure we have the technology in place for that implementation. So to conclude, I'd like to give you an example of how our students are addressing the common core state standards using iPads um, and a combination of two computer applications called Edmodo and Subtext. And I don't know if you had a chance to ever get on some of those applications, but with Edmodo and Subtext, teachers can amplify their lessons as add digital um, academic content continue classroom discussions online, and foster their writing skills. They can also give polls and quizzes to check for student understanding and many other functions. So it would really be great if I had some students around to be able to help show you how that works. Do you see any students in the lounge at all? Is there? Let's see. Do we have students here? Oh, great. You know, I think we just happen to have a couple of students that, in fact, I think we have 11. There just happens to be 11 tables. These are third graders from a stickers class, and, and they're the Young Americans group, and they use a lot of technology. So I think I have, I think I have two and a half minutes left. And so in my two and a half minutes, these, uh, these guys and gals are going to scatter to a table really quickly and show you just for like two minutes or less how they use Edmodo and Subtext using an iPad and the Common Core State Standard. So, Boys and girls, hit a table really quickly. Speak nice and loudly, and I'll be quiet. Uh, find a table. I don't have a seat. <laughs> Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, so I was trying to like find someone to say, hey. Allowing us to share a little bit about our school district. And thank you.